Hi friends, in this video, I'm going to talk about why Spring MVC REST API cannot handle the back pressure efficiently. One of the important interview questions for a senior developer. First of all, what is a Spring MVC? Now, how can I use a Spring MVC to create a REST API web application? Spring MVC is a Java framework which is used to build web applications and Spring MVC use model view controller design pattern. If you look at the basic flow, the user makes a request to the web application which is implemented using Spring MVC. The web container handles the request if there are any remote calls, for example, to an external system or to a database, it's been handled and the response will be prepared and sent to the client. So this is a basic flow for REST API Spring MVC. First of all, what is the back pressure? So whenever a user makes a request to the web application, in turn, it makes a call to the external system or database. If you look at this call, it's an IO blocked. Each request is handled by a request thread. Here it will be waiting for the response from the external system or database. So hence it's called IO blocked. We don't know when the response will come because it depends on the availability and the network. To summarize, the request thread will be blocked to get the response from the external system or the database. So what is the back pressure? For example, this external system can handle only 50 requests per second. And then this system can handle 100 requests per second. So the number of users are increasing, the request is also increasing. So what happens since it's a synchronous call and it's waiting for the response for the IO blocked calls. So the back pressure will be built here because the number of threads is more here and the number of threads to handle in the external system is less. So when the request to the system is growing, back pressure will be built. And this is a, a critical situation. And this whole scenario is called as back pressure. Let's see another example. The server A makes 100 requests to server B, and whereas server C can handle only 75 requests. So here, a back pressure will be built since server B cannot handle more requests and it will be a problem. So this is called as back pressure. So now we know the basic definition of back pressure. But how do we solve it? To solve the back pressure, as far as I know, there are two solutions. One is auto scaling and the next one is reactive programming. So whenever in the server, the request is increasing and back pressure is building, we can auto scale. We can increase the number of computers or servers to handle the load from the users. This is one of the option to handle the back pressure. And the second option is reactive programming. In Spring, it's called a Spring Web Flux, which uses reactive programming to solve this problem. To give a basic definition of reactive programming, so whenever there is a request is increasing for an application and it has to make a call to the remote servers or databases, so we don't do it synchronously. We make a queue here and we handle using event streams so that we can handle the back pressure in a better way. So I would highly recommend to read more about reactive programming and Spring WebFlex, how it works. Then you can understand how exactly the back pressure has been handled by Spring WebFlex. Hi friends, in this video, we saw the basic information about why Spring MVC cannot handle the back pressure efficiently because first of all, the Spring MVC uses a synchronous way meaning each request will be handled by a thread and if there is any IO blocked, this thread will be waiting. Hence, there will be a back pressure build. So that's why the Spring MVC is not able to handle the back pressure efficiently. So the alternative way is we can use Spring WebFlex where we can use event streams. So when we use Spring WebFlex, it will be in an asynchronous way, meaning there won't be any thread waiting for the IO blocked. It will be the thread will be released and event streams will be created. Hope this small information is useful. Thank you. Thank you.